All right, happy Monday and welcome to New Wave Traders. We're going to be diving into Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the dollar today, taking a look at the bull and the bear scenarios and the invalidations as when one count is confirmed over the other. I'll be sharing with you my overall bias and how I'm looking to navigate this market, any trade setups that I'm currently in or future upcoming trade setups that I see as well. I'll be sharing with you guys in this video today. If this is your first time, then welcome. My name is Shiloh. I'm a full-time trader in the crypto market since 2017, and I'm focused on becoming an industry leader in creating successful traders. So if you're struggling to see results, then check out some of the free resources I have with the link down in the description below. All right, without further ado, let's get into this. We're going to be starting off on Bitcoin with the daily count here. And the overall premise and what I'm looking for is basically a overall ABC correction. We're correcting this entire leg up from 15.5K all the way up to 31K. We're currently correcting that move. And so it's my projection that we're in a B wave rally of that move right now, looking to pull back again, still staying above 20K overall. It's very crucial that we stay above 20K and we don't break this previous low back here at 19.8K. And our ABC here would do that, but what would be even better is if our B wave gets bigger here and draws up. We have a point of breakdown order block sitting at 29.5K. And if we drew up even past that, the higher this B wave goes, the further up our C wave target becomes, which makes our move here more sideways, which is a more bullish structure than one that creates a lower high and a lower low. All right. So until we can get this B wave to extend up beyond 29.5K though, I am going to project that we do get rejected underneath this point of breakdown order block. And our current extension of this move up right now only puts us at 27.8K. So it won't even, or it'll become pretty close to breaking the A wave high and maybe not even break it, which would be a much more bearish B wave than one that at least gets up to this um, 29.5k level. I uh, will show you how we can make it all the way up to this level here rather than getting rejected at 27.8k and some of the roadblocks along that path down on the one hour time frame here. But for now on the daily time frame, the overall um, scenario that I, I'm looking at is basically a larger correction in time taking place down here between um, 29.5k uh, and then a another low down to maybe 22.5 to 23k and then an extension for our C wave up that takes us to either the point of breakdown order block or the bearish order block. The two price levels or zones roughly are 37.5K to 40K and then we've got 45.5K all the way up to 48.3K. So those are going to be my two levels and we can fine tune those a little bit more as price uh, develops and we get more data to look at price extensions and so forth over here. All right, so we can go down and we can take a look at the one hour time frame. And what we're going to be looking at here is really uh, the wave structures internally in this zone here. And it's been pretty nasty wave structures to on Bitcoin here. ETH is a little bit more reliable and, and much cleaner setups. So I'll be sharing that over there as well. But right now, what I'm looking at here on the one hour time frame is a expanded flat or just a running flat. And basically all that means is that we broke this floor back here. We took the liquidity underneath it that created an expanded B for us. And there's only two corrections that do that. It's either a running flat or an expanded flat. And those can be WXY structures or ABC structures. They can both be running or expanded in that manner. And right now with the current wave structure we have, it does suggest that we're dealing with more of a one, two, one, two. And it's a fairly ugly one, one, two, one, two, because we have a leading diagonal in the front here. And leading diagonals mimic corrective structures, which means that it's very likely uh, creating just a WXY towards the upside here as well. And that gets shut down at 27.8K. Remember how I was saying that we might not break the previous A wave high here, um, and that's sitting at 28.1K to 27.6K is the zone that I'm looking at there. And a more specific level is the one to one at $27,774. All right, and so if we squeeze past that first area of resistance that we're coming up on here, then I do think it's likely that we actually move up to our cluster order block and a target at $29,219 instead, roughly. And that would give us an expanded flat, at which point I'd still look for price to actually move back down. But we'll reevaluate that as we start to uh, pull back off of those areas of resistance, and we'll see how the market responds to those areas as well. Um, so in the short term, all of this gets invalidated if we come back underneath $26,406, all right? And probability shifts, it decreases for the bulls 
if we come back underneath the previous wave one high here, sitting at $26,868. So we want to stay above this level here at 26.8K and 100% cannot go underneath 26.4K or else we invalidate the impulse towards the upside. And instead we'll be looking for either continuation back down or some sort of a running triangle, which I'll show you over on ETH. I'll show you a triangle option that's available here too. Um, in fact, I'll just show you on Bitcoin what it would look like here. And that running triangle means that price needs to contract. So we'd look for if the price drops underneath 26.4K now, we would look at what's called a running triangle. And a running triangle is where the B wave becomes expanded. So again, we break the floor, take the liquidity, and then we get A, B, C, D, E. And then this would actually end up breaking towards the downside again. All right. So that's uh, basically all I'm looking for if all of a sudden we break underneath 26.4K. So long as we don't break underneath this though, I am looking for those upwards targets first. Those are my biases, but I, this is the bearish scenario, so to speak, if we do take out the previous low at 26.4K right now. Again, probability shifts towards the downside if we go underneath 26.8K, all right? So let's go see how this relates over with um, ETH as it's got a little bit cleaner and more reliable structures. I think a lot of this price action that we've seen down here on Bitcoin, especially with this last drop and this previous low over here, isn't as reliable as patterns, um, whereas ETH is a really clean one. And you'll see the difference here as I go over to it. All right. So we're going to start off on the daily time frame here on ETH. Now, one thing that I like over on Bitcoin versus ETH is that on the daily time frame, Bitcoin has a better and more reliable structure here than ETH does. But on the one hour time frame, ETH has better and more reliable structures. Okay, so they're just cleaner patterns on the one hour time frame. Whereas the daily pattern right now, this pattern, I, in other words, as a whole, all of this is not a very clean pattern. Um, from an LA wave standpoint. Okay, so but I will tell you what I am projecting with this and it does line up with the Bitcoin as well as I am using them both in confluence with each other to help with the analysis. All right, and the daily time frame here is basically just projecting that we're in an ending diagonal down to the 0.618 extension of a running flat. So I have to draw this out in nice big A, B, C, ending diagonal into the 618, which falls at 1449. All right, and so in this case here, we're going to be diving into on the one hour time frame, we're going to dive into this structure right here and take a look at what counts would be most reliable for this running flat and when that also starts to invalidate. All right, but so long as we can get this running flat scenario or just a pull down to 1450, I do think that we can get a one to one extension up to our point of breakdown order block or our bearish order block. We have better confluence overall on the bearish order block here because the one to one extension on let's see, I'm on log scale right now hits right at that bearish order block. But if I go to regular, you'll see that the point of breakdown order block kind of is a little bit closer to the one to one and the bearish order block is way off. OK, so I'm actually relying a little bit more on log scale here. I do think that is the one that will get hit. But when it comes to resistances, the linear scale is going to get hit first. And so I will look at linear scale first because that's the price we're going to hit first and see what our reaction is there. That's how I like to handle the difference between log and linear scale there. All right, but going back to log scale, just so you guys know the difference of what I'm on here, um, we're going to dive into this one hour time frame. This is my bullish scenario slash bearish scenario on ETH on the daily time frame. If we start to break down and get a market structure break under 1368, <clears throat> and but more even more specifically the previous low back here at 1089 um, this is the one that's very very bearish if we break underneath that and so I think I'd allow some flexibility in this zone here between 1368 and 1450 to kind of get wicked around a little bit and still have this whole structure be intact All right so 100% invalidation of this running flat is if we go beyond $1,084 uh, but more specifically we can even narrow that down as we get into this territory here. So let's go down to the one hour time frame here. And we're going to look at two counts. I'm going to show you the triangle one, which is similar to what I just showed you on uh, Bitcoin, but it's not a running triangle over here. It's just a contracting triangle uh, and maybe even a ascending triangle that we might end up forming out here. So let's go over the triangle first. All right. And the reason why the triangle is important here is because if we're looking at more of an ending diagonal, 
then we don't want our bounce up to get too high. In other words, we don't want it to, we definitely don't want it to go beyond the point of breakdown order block or this cluster order block up here sitting at about 1850. All right, that's about the max draw up that I would allow for some sort of an ending diagonal to really take place. In fact, I'd probably at that point consider this more of a WXY structure, an ABC structure towards the downside rather than an ending diagonal. So the triangle is really our best scenario for the ending diagonal. And on the higher time frame, the ending diagonal makes the most sense because of where the price extensions and Fibonacci relationships put us when it comes to those patterns, All right? So this is our triangle here. And what we're simply looking for is a pivot at 1726 or even 1684. So these are our two roadblocks for our triangle to pivot and come back down. Um, a C wave inside of a triangle loves to hit a 0.618 extension. And so that's going to have the best confluence in between 1689 and 1682. All right. <clears throat> Whereas like a one to one up here that puts us into ABC and WXY territory and no triangle at all. So the triangle becomes invalid if we break over this A wave high at 1745. So it's a very tight zone in here as to where this triangle has to pivot. In other words, so I'm just going to get us into the one hour time frame because it's a little bit easier to see the subway breakdown here. And what we're looking for is we're looking for this to be the first uh, leg of a move towards the upside here. So either an ABC up or an impulse up and then a rejection back down and looking for three legged moves across every single one of these ABCDE structures here. All right. So if we come back down underneath 1604, this count is invalid 100 percent. All right. Um, we, we can't come back down underneath slow. We need this to be the start of something. All right, and then we've got, aside from the triangle here, let's talk about if we do break up over 1730, where are we going to? And that's going to be the one-to-one -one at 1806. This is going to be my ABC structure here, where I'm looking at this as a one 2 one 2 And notice that in both scenarios, we do not come back down underneath the origination of this move here, which is at 1606, okay? And so probability shifts towards the downside if we retrace more than 62% of this move. So uh, roughly speaking, we shouldn't come back down underneath 1634. And it'd be great if we'd use the previous wave one high right here at 16.53 as support. So use that as support, consolidate sideways here, and continue this kick towards the upside. All right, this would bring us to our cluster order block, point of breakdown, and our one-to-one -one extension sitting at about 18.19 all the way up to 18.69. So a nice little zone there for resistance. Anything beyond that, and I'm going to have to reevaluate this first leg back here, or possibly even just a more bullish structure where we then correct sideways and then continue back up. But for now, this is the main area of resistance or we're simply going to consolidate. So if I overlay those two counts, you can see that our inflection point between these two counts is up here at the one-to-one -one at 1727. Anything underneath this territory and we fall within uh, our triangle path more for probability wise. And if we go above 1728 and 100% confirmation when we go above the previous A wave high here at 1747, that this is no longer a triangle option. And we are looking for uh, price to extend up to 1822 and as high as 1865, but should not go beyond that area there. And so to look at this in relationship with the DXY, the dollar, it, they usually have an inverse or they have been having an inverse relationship. Now, sometimes they move together. We're going to talk about that a little bit, but right now they have an inverse relationship. So when dollar is going up, Bitcoin and crypto is going down, and vice versa. When the dollar goes down, then crypto should be going up. All right, and what we've been following over here on the dollar has held very accurate uh, for the last couple weeks slash months uh, that we've been projecting out this whole correction right here. So we've got this big going out on the daily time frame here. I've got this big running flat, and we took a trade towards the upside here that we exited at the 101 at 104.2. And I was hoping that we would actually take the liquidity above this level at 104.5 and the liquidity above this W wave at 105.92 before getting rejected back towards the downside. And we have continued to climb up right here, which is actually a good sign. It tells me that we are trying to take this liquidity up here, but I need the confirmation thereafter, which is the rejection back down underneath 104.3. All right, so I'm looking for this to basically sweep up right above the W wave. And even if we reject it right now, it's fine. We do have bearish divergence present on the TDI indicator um, on this current rise. So these higher highs are starting to see less momentum. 
And so that is telling me that we are going to get a pullback here soon. And whether that wicks the previous W wave high at 105.9 or if we just get rejected where we're at, I'm looking for that rejection back underneath 104.3, at which point, per the note up here, inner short after liquidity grab and rejection back underneath 104.4, that is where I'm looking for this short setup to take place. And that short setup is going to be a partner leg to this drop over here. That's a pretty massive drop towards the downside there, and, and that leg does not have a partner leg to it. And so that partner leg matches up roughly. The higher this B wave goes, it's going to drag our target up a little bit. So once it finally pivots, we'll have a better target down here. But right now, if we were to reject where we're currently at, that set us at about 93.14, which is a 10.77% move. And you know we don't know what the risk reward ratio is going to be just yet because we don't know the size of this wave one or the wave two pullback. Um, but you know it should definitely be over a five to one uh, risk reward ratio there. All right. So this is what I'm looking for on the dollar, which means if we're about to drop on the dollar, then we should see a big rally on Bitcoin. And in the short term, if we can take the liquidity on the top side of the W here, then Bitcoin and crypto should go down and we should see the dollar go up. The only place that I can see them moving together would be on this drop right here. And so this wave one drop, at which point they move up together on the two and then they diverge again. So at the wave two, when the dollar drops for wave through, then crypto would go up for its larger move to 40K, um, for example. Okay, so that's where I could see the next uh, um, split relationship or pulling a, pulling a, a brain fart on it. But um, that's where I could see the, the two separate again if they are going to move together in this downward drop. Okay, but so far they've had an inverse relationship and that's been holding strong. Uh, but I do start to see them coming into an area where they could match up. So I just wanted to highlight that as well. And that's about it. So if you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments down below. If you got value out of today's video, please like it and uh, share it to other social platforms such as Discords that you're a part of. And I will see you for Wednesday and Friday's video. Otherwise, come join uh, my social platforms. I share short videos all the time on there that are educational as well. And you can come join us in our free Discord at discord.tradethewave.com. Again, links are going to be down in the description below. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Much love, everybody. Take care.